Pulmonary fibrosis, at the end result of many pathological processes from infections to autoimmune diseases, it may be localized or diffuse. Localized pulmonary fibrosis, infectious and non-infectious, infectious, granulomatous diseases, TB and fungal infections, or fibrosis following parenchymatous lesions as non-resolving pneumonia or lung abscess, non-infectious after cirrhotic injury and trauma, interstitial lung diseases, diffuse parenchymal lung disease, interstitial lung disease refers to group of lung diseases affecting the interstitial, alveoli, alveolar epithelium, capillary endothelium, spaces between those structures as well as the perivascular and lymphatic tissues, causes of interstitial lung diseases, drug-induced, inhaled substances, a connective tissue disorder, post-infections, idiopathic and acute respiratory distress syndrome, idiopathic such as sarcoidosis or idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, cryptogenic fibrosing alveolitis, progressive fibrotic interstitial lung disease of unknown etiology, post-infections, viral mycoplasma pneumonia, tuberculosis and fungal infections, connective tissue diseases, sy uh, systemic sclerosis, systemic lupus erythematosus, rheumatoid arthritis, Wigner's granulomatosis and Church strauss syndrome. Then we have the drug-induced antibiotics such as cephalosporin, penicillins and sulfonamides, chemotherapeutic drugs, mesotrexate, cyclophosphamide, enteresmic drugs, amiodarone, anti-inflammatory drugs, aspirin and gold, drug-induced lupus, hydralazine and INH, and finally inhalation, occupational and environmental factors, inorganic, it's called pneumoconiosis, such as silicolosis, asbestosis, and coal workers pneumoconiosis, organic, it's called hypersensitivity pneumonitis, Pathology. Pathological features typically include inflammation of the alveolar walls, air spaces, and terminal bronchioles, leading to progressive bilateral destruction of the lung parenchyma, clinical picture, symptoms, exertional breathlessness, which can progress to dyspnea at rest, dry cough, also prominent complaint, chest pain, hemoptysis may occur in cases of in, uh, intra-alveolar hemorrhage, symptoms of the cause, myalgia, astralgia, interstitial lung diseases might occur due to connective tissue diseases, history of drug intake or occupational factor, absence of pulmonary infection or neoplasm, signs, cyanosis, clubbing, signs of the cause, signs of complications such as respiratory failure and core pulmonale, bilateral basal and inspiratory crepitations. Investigations we have radiology, chest x-ray, bilateral pulmonary infiltration with lentic reticular nodular shadow. In advanced diseases, there may be cystic areas or honeycombing, High resolution CT to detect early cases and assess the severity. Lab to reach the cause. ESRTRP, antinuclear antibody rheumatoid factor, serum liver angiotensin converting enzyme in sarcoidosis. Arterial blood gases typically showing type 1 respiratory failure with hypoxemia and normal or low carbon dioxide. Pulmonary function test show restrictive pattern. Normal FEV1 over FVC ratio. Reduced gas, uh, gas transfer. Reduced diffusing capacity for carbon monoxide. Reduced lung volumes, vital capacity, and total lung capacity. Invasive uh, methods, bronchoscopy was bad to diagnose the cause, and lung biopsy, whether transbronchial or open lung biopsy. Treatment, treatment of the cause, antibiotic and oxygen therapy may be needed. Lung transplantation in advanced cases, and finally, cortisone and immunosuppressive therapy, adasuprine or cyclophosphamide in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. Occupational interstitial lung diseases or pneumoconiosis, the three most common types are asbestosis, silicolosis, and cool workers pneumoconiosis. Asbestosis, long history of asbestos exposure in construction, insulation, fireproofing, friction, materials, shipbuilding, electrical repair, carpentry, plumbing, and welding. Clinical manifestations of interstitial lung diseases, pleural effusion, bronchogenic carcinoma and mesothelioma, silicolosis, caused by prolonged inhalation of silica particles, clinical manifestations of interstitial lung diseases, and they are at higher risk for development of TB. Coal workers pneumoconiosis caused by deposition of coal dust within the lung. There are two types, single and progressive. Single pneumoconiosis, usually asymptomatic without associated uh, clinical signs. Progressive massive fibrosis, usually associated with cough, protect, uh, productive of mucoid or blackened sputum with breathlessness and may lead to development of core pulmonale. Unremarkable examination without clubbing or crepitations. Then we have two syndromes. Kaplan's syndrome and Hammond Rich syndrome. Kaplan's syndrome, min uh, minors with positive rheumatoid factor can develop large nodules. This occurs on the background of simple pneumoconiosis and in those with relatively low coal dust exposure. Hammond Rich syndrome, fundamental progressive variant of acute interstitial pneumonitis due to interstitial pulmonary fibrosis or other causes leading to death with core pulmonary or respiratory failure within six months. 
Then we have finally hypersensitivity pneumonitis or extrinsic allergic alveolitis. It's a cell-mediated immune reaction to inhaled antigens. Patients must be sensitized by initial exposure with subsequent re-exposure leading to acute or chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Acute form follows short period of exposure to high concentration of antigen, usually reversible, while the chronic form typically follows period of chronic exposure to low antigen dose and less reversible causes type 3 and 4 hypersensitivity. It's not a topic disease, not characterized by rise in tissue eosinophils or IgE, and it's not a type 1 hypersensitivity. Antigens, we have chemical such as paints, animal proteins, uh, bird droppings, feathers, rats, and microbial such as uh, moldy hay, mushroom compost, and moldy sugar cane. Clinical picture, acute form and chronic form. Chronic form, same as interstitial lung disease. Acute form, examination, inspiratory crepitations, and we have dyspnea, dry cough, systemic symptoms, fever, astralgia, myalgia, headache occurring four to six hours after exposure to the antigen. Investigations, radiological infiltration, pulmonary function test restrictive pattern, and serum antibody IgG, Preceptin to suspected allergen, treatment avoidance of suspected allergen and cortisone, sarcoidosis. Definition It's a multi system granulomatous disorder of unknown etiology, most commonly affecting young adults. Granuloma most often appear in the lungs or lymph nodes, and any organ can be affected. Pathology The characteristic granuloma composed of mag uh, macrophages, lymphocytes with intracellular inclusion bodies. Etiology, the exact cause is unknown, but most probably due to alteration in the immune response after exposure to antigenic stimulus. Clinical picture, it may be asymptomatic, pulmonary, dyspnea, cough, wheezing, hemoptysis, upper airway, nasal obstruction, hoarseness of voice, lymphadenopathy, painless, rubbery lymph node enlargement, cervical and screen lymph nodes are most frequently affected, skin, erythema nodosum, red painful bumps on the anterior aspects of the leg, lupus pernium, violaceous lesions on the nose and cheeks, eye anterior uveitis, joints, polyarthritis, cardiac arrhythmia, congestive heart failure, CNS, cranial neuropathy, most commonly facial nerve, diabetes and sabitis, renal, acute renal failure due to hypercalcemia, granulomatous interstitial nephritis, hypercalcemia due to excess production of vitamin D, investigations, chest x-ray, stage 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, bilateral hilar uh, lymphadenopathy, 2, bilateral hilar lymphadenopathy, with pulmonary infiltration, 3, pulmonary infiltration only, stage 4, fibrosis, combination of bilateral lymph, hilar lymphadenopathy, erythema nodosum, fever, and astralgia, it's called as Lofgren syndrome. The main differential diagnosis are TB and lymphoma, so we should make great efforts to confirm diagnosis of sarcoidosis histologically by lung, lymph node, or skin biopsy, treatment, cortisone is the main therapy, uh, others, mesotrexate, chloroquine, lung transplantation in advanced cases, prognosis, good prognosis for uh, Lovegren syndrome because they have complete resolution in 80%, poorer prognosis, black race, age greater than 40, neural involvement, nephrocalcinosis, chronic hypercalcemia, chronic uveitis, nasomucosal involvement, and finally lupus pernium. Prognosis according to chest x-ray stage 2, 50% of cases recover spontaneously in 2 years, 30-40% to require systemic steroids, and 10-15% to require long-term steroids. Stage 3, worse prognosis, only 30% show significant improvement with steroids. The mediastinum, diseases affecting mediastinum, inflammation, mediastinitis, fibrosis, pneumomediastinum, and mediastinal masses, whether benign or malignant. Anterior mediastinal masses, Cymoma, thyroid swelling, lymphoma, teratoma, middle mediastinal masses, aortic aneurysm, pericardial effusion, bronchogenic carcinoma, and cardiomegaly, superior mediastinum, aortic aneurysm, retrosternal goiter, thymoma, and esophageal tumors, posterior mediastinal masses, descending aortic aneurysm, esophageal tumors, posterior diaphragmatic hernia, and finally, neural tumor, neurofibroma, neuroblastoma, and paraganglioma. Clinical picture of mediastinal masses asymptomatic in 30 to 50 percentage of the cases. Pressure manifestations due to compression of the following structures. We have three tubes, three vessels, three nerves, and three bones. Bones, vertebra and sternum, presented by pain. Ribs, rib, uh, rib erosion with pain. Nerves, sympathetic chain Horner syndrome, phrenic nerves hiccup, diaphragmatic paralysis, left recurrent laryngeal nerve, hoarseness of voice, three tubes, trachea, dyspnea, and brachycuff, esophagus, dysphagia, thoracic duct, chylus effusion, 
three vessels, aorta, ischemic pain, unequal pulse of the upper limbs, a zygous vein, engorged veins on the upper part of the chest, superior vena cava, congested non-pulsating neck veins, collaterals on the chest wall, edema of the face, superior vena cava is vulnerable to obstruction because it's thin-walled, intravascular pressure is low and confined to lymph node and other relatively more rigid structures, clinical manifestations of the cause, cymoma, mycenia gravis, uh, gravis, red cell aplasia and myocarditis, pneumomediastinum means presence of air in the mediastinum, etiology, alveolar rupture with dissection of air into the mediastinum or perforation or rupture of esophagus, trachea or main bronchi, clinical picture, typically there is severe substernal chest pain due to stretching of the mediastinal structures, physical examination reveals subcutaneous emphysema in the suprasternal notch, Hamann's sign, which is crunching or clicking noise with the heartbeat and best heard in the left lateral position, Diagnosis confirmed with just x-ray, treatment, no treatment required. If mediastinal structures are compressed, the compression must be relieved with needle aspiration. So, to sum up, pneumomediastinum air from the alveolar rupture or rupture of trachea bronchi. Clinical picture, we have subcutaneous emphysema, Haman sign, which is clicking with, uh, with the heartbeat. Best hairs in the, in the left lateral position. Severe substernal chest pain, no treatment is needed, just needle aspiration. Acute mediastinitis. Life threatening condition, etiology, esophageal perforation, complication of esophagoscopy or insertion of Blakemore tube, cardiac surgery, clinical picture, dramatic chest pain, dyspnea with fever due to mesdiastinal infection, treatment, antibiotics, and surgical drainage, investigations for the cause of uh, mediastinal uh, mass, in a case, I'm sorry, with mediastinal mass, chest x ray, CT MRI, contrast studies, uh, barium swallow, and geography. Bronchoscopy and biopsy if needed, scaline node biopsy, radioactive iodine and uh, uptake for thyroid swelling, treatment of mediastinal masses, treatment of the cause, all mediastinal masses whether benign or malignant must be surgically removed because they may enlarge and compress mediastinal structures, bleeding, rupture or infection, malignant degeneration, and then we have lung collapse, definition, collapse or atelectasis, Acquired deflation of the previously inflated lung, atelectasis, incomplete expansion of lung adverse, causes of atelectasis, prematurity, hyaline membrane disease, reduced surfactant, congenital bronchial obstruction, respiratory center depression by sedatives given to the mother, causes and types of collapse, obstruction collapse, non-obstruction collapse, obstruction collapse, absorption collapse, Bronchial obstruction leads to absorption of air in the corresponding area of lung tissue. The oxygen is absorbed into the blood at faster rate than it's replaced. Intraluminal, foreign body, secretions, wall, bronchostenosis, tumor, outside, enlarged lymph node or mediastinal mass, non-obstruction, collapse, compression, adhesive, or cicatrization, collapse. Cicatrization, collapse, collapse due to pulmonary fibrosis. Fibrosis leads to stiffness of the lung, decreasing its compliance. The volume of the affected lung is reduced. Adhesive collapse, collapse due to abnormal lung surfactant. Lung surfactant is lipoprotein secreted by the alveolar epithelium. Its function is to reduce the surface tension of the fluids lining the alveoli, overcoming the normal tendency of the lung to collapse. So its absence leads to alveolar collapse. Hyaline membrane disease, neonatal respiratory distress syndrome, usually occurring in premature infants, and adult respiratory distress syndrome. Compression collapse, pressure, passive or relaxation collapse. There is something that presses on the lung, such as pleural effusion or pneumothorax. Clinical picture, dyspnea cuff, clinical picture of the cause, signs, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation. Percussion, dullness over the affected side, auscultation, diminished breath sound intensity, palpation, Diminished TVF, mediastinal shift to the affected side, inspection, diminished movement of the affected side, chest wall retraction on the affected side, complications, bronchiectasis, fibrosis, respiratory failure, and finally recurrent pneumonia and lung abscess, investigations, radiology, chest x-ray, area of homogeneous opacity over the affected loop, displacement of fissures, crowding of bronchi, raised diaphragm, crowding of ribs, mediastinal shift towards the side of the collapse, hilum shift up or downward towards the side of the collapse, compensatory hyperinflation of the normal 
lung. Bronchoscopy, diagnostic to detect the cause, whether foreign body or tumor, therapeutic to remove the foreign body or secretions, investigations for the cause and for complications, high resolution CT. Treatment, treatment of the cause, bronchoscopic removal of foreign body or secretions, breathing exercise, oxygen therapy, prophylactic antibiotics, acute post-operative uh, post massive collapse, etiology, lack of good pre-operative preparation, general anesthesia in presence of chest infection, neglected aspiration of secretions during and after surgery, inadequate cough or chest expansion post-operatively due to pain, aspiration of vomitus due to fall of stomach, due to, due to full stomach at time of anesthesia, clinical picture, symptoms, sudden onset, 24 to 72 hours after operation of dyspnea, cough, wheezy chest, signs, same as collapse, investigations, same as collapse, treatment, prophylactic, Avoid predisposing factors, therapeutic as collapse. Post-operative pulmonary complications, causes of dyspnea after operations, are thus acute respiratory distress syndrome, aspiration lung abscess, aspiration pneumonia, pulmonary embolism, post-operative collapse, and pneumothorax. Then we have hemoptysis. Hemoptysis, expectoration of blood originating from lungs or tracheobronchial tree below the vocal cord, False hemoptysis, blood originating above the vocal cord and the source would be mouse or pharynx. Causes, respiratory causes, cardiovascular causes and systemic causes. Systemic causes, hemorrhagic fever, smallpox, hemorrhagic blood diseases, purpura hemophilia, heparin and oral anticoagulants. Cardiovascular causes, we have rupture, aortic aneurysm, severe systemic hypertension, chest infection due to lung congestion, mitral stenosis and left-sided heart failure, myocardial infarction, dressler syndrome, post-infarction syndrome, pulmonary apoplexy, Frank severe hemoptysis occurring mainly in the mitral stenosis due to rupture of bronchial varices, respiratory causes, infections, pulmonary TB, pneumonia, bronchiectasis, lung abscess, acute and chronic bronchitis, tumors, bronchial carcinoma and adenoma, pulmonary infarction, atrogenic, lung biopsy or bronchoscopy, connective tissue diseases and vasculitic syndromes such as Wegener's, granulomatosis, SLE and good pasture syndrome. Most common causes of massive hemoptysis from 100 to 600 milliliters of blood in 24 hours, life-threatening emergency with mortality rate up to 75 percentage due to bronchiectasis, bronchial carcinoma, cavitating lung diseases, TB or fungus, mycetoma cavity, mitral stenosis leading to pulmonary apoplexy. Diagnostic approach to hemoptysis, history and physical examination, exclusion of false hemoptysis by local examination, differentiation between hemoptysis and hematemesis, hemoptysis, Coughing of blood, hematemesis, vomiting of blood, past history of hemoptysis, chest disease, and we have cough before the attack and during the attack there's bl uh, bright lead blood, frothy or mixed with sputum, hematemesis, we have past history of GIT or liver disease, before the attack, nausea and heartburn, during the attack, dark red coffee brown mixed with food particles, after the attack, in hemoptysis we have tinged sputum, in hematemesis we have melina, examination, for hemoptysis, we have crepitations. For hematemesis, we have chest examination is free. And then we have assessment for patients, uh, signs and symptoms of underlying diseases and estimation of the amount and course of bleeding. Estimation of the amount and course of bleeding, presence of blood clots in the sputum, uh, more than weak, suggestive of lung cancer, hemoptysis with purulent uh, sputum, suggests infective cause, bronchiectasis, pink frosty sputum occurs in acute pulmonary edema, coughing, large amounts of pure blood is rare but potentially a life-threatening condition and the most frequent causes are bronchiectasis, tuberculosis and lung cancer, hemoptysis occurring intermittently for few years, it occurs in association with respiratory tract infection and bronchiectasis, then we have assessment of the patient for symptoms and signs of underlying diseases, skin examination for SLE, cardiac examination, pulmonary hypertension, mitral stenosis, heart failure, finger clubbing, bronchiectasis, bronchogenic carcinoma, consolidation, pneumonia, bronchi, chronic bronchitis, bronchial carcinoma, risk factors for COBD, bronchogenic carcinoma, particularly smoking, history of previous or coexisting disorders, heart failure and SLE, hemoptysis following the acute onset of pleuritic chest pain and dyspnea suggested for pulmonary embolism. Investigations, we have blood tests, CBC, iron RPTT, chest x-ray, CT chest, bronchoscopy, sputum examination, echocardiography for cardiac lesions, evaluation for pulmonary embolism, spiral CT, ventilation perfusion scan, autoantibodies, C-ANCA and antinuclear antibody if vasculitis is suspected, treatment, 
Mild moderate hemoptysis, massive hemoptysis. Mild moderate hemoptysis, rest and cough suppressant, avoid expectorants, treatment of the cause, massive hemoptysis, airway protection and ventilation, protection of the lung, bleeding lung is vital to maintain adequate gas exchange, endotracheal intubation with double human tube and mechanical ventilation, sedation, dimorphin and dizepam, cardiovascular support, blood transfusion, reverse anticoagulants, central intravenous access, Rigid bronchoscopy with general anesthesia may allow localization of the site of bleeding. Balloon tamponade with Fogarty catheter to isolate the affected site with lavage of other bronchi and trachea from blood. Bronchial artery embolization to embolize blood, uh, bleeding artery, usually by gel foam. Surgical resection of the bleeding uh, lobe or lung. And finally, induction of artificial pneumothorax on the affected site to collapse the lung. And this concludes our part for today.